I'm Scott, and welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. In this bedroom remodeling project, we're going to show you how to add character and value to your home. In a previous episode, I took old sliding doors out, framed this in, and installed these fixed doors to really dress up the closet. But what I realized is partway through that, the closet really needed some help and organization. In here I've got a long shelf the builder had put in this house, and it's sagging, and it's not really providing optimal space. So I'm going to design a solution where I've got a lot of storage on the side here, more depth on the top, and really make maximum use of the space. Here's the plan. I'm going to keep this existing support back here, but I'm going to take out this middle and this bracket. And I'm going to put a board from the floor all the way up here, and that way I've got really strong support for the shelf. At the end here you can see I've got additional space, so I'm going to bring the shelf out more, probably about 17 inches. Right now it's just under 12, so there's not that much storage space on the top. The material that I've chosen to use for this is plywood, and specifically plywood that doesn't have any formaldehyde glue in it. Formaldehyde is something that can off-gas over time, and that creates indoor air pollution. For a bedroom space, I want the air as clean as possible. Now I can mark my height of my upright here, and I just mark it here, cut that off, and I should be good to go. With this upright panel the right length, I now need to notch it back here, remove this old support piece, and notch it at the baseboard. In order for me to figure out where this piece goes, I have to put this shelf in first. This allows me to get a nice tight fit here, and then this one I just make plumb. So this shelf here is now level. What I'm going to do is tag it in here with some screws. And then on the other side, I use a strip like this against the wall to build a little shelf, and that'll secure it in. This is the strip I want to secure, so I need to find the studs. So what I do is I put the shelf in on the brace that I just put on the wall and then I set it on top of the upright and put it on top of a clamp that allows me to get it to the right height here. Then what I'm doing is drilling in from the end to put my screws in. Now what I do is level this up so I've got it plumb straight up and down and then tag it in here with a screw. So with these two joined here, I've got a fixed unit. The next thing I want to do is secure this piece. So I've got the same process I'm going to follow. I've got two shelves to put in here first, then I'll secure that in, and then I'll tag it through the top. A screw through the top here isn't ideal, but being storage space, I'm not that concerned about it. And then the last part is putting a shelf here, and then I've got all these pieces measured, cut, and fit. To tie this piece in securely, I put two strips at the back, and I'm going to be screwing this into those at the back. And what that'll do is prevent this from wanting to wander back and forth. This board here is tagged in at the top, so it won't be moving around on me. I've now got everything secured and in place, so the last thing I need to do to prep these before painting them is I need to finish the edge of the plywood. I've labeled the front edges so I know what they are. I'll take those in the shop and show you how that's done. Once I've done finishing the front edges, then I can go through and prime everything and paint everything. Again, I'm concerned about the indoor air quality in this room, so I'm using no VOC paint. That's volatile organic compounds. Those are things that can create indoor air pollution. So with no VOC primer and paint on this, I've got a shelving unit that's as clean as possible for this bedroom. 
Installing edge banding on plywood is a fairly simple process. It's really just ironing it on. There's a few steps that will help make it easier. The first step is I use a sanding block and just clean down that edge and keep the sanding block nice and square. Hold your hand here to help guide it and just gently push this along. It'll just get rid of any fuzzy marks that are on the plywood from when it was cut. Then what I do is cut a piece that's a little bit longer than what I'm working with so I don't end up with a spool. So I just spread this out along the whole length and then cut it with shop scissors. So with the iron set to a cotton setting and no steam, you want to dry iron, set this on here and make sure that it's centered as you go. So I start at the very end and just slowly work my way, pushing down and helping to squeeze out that glue. The iron activates the glue and it sticks to the edge of the plywood. Once the glue's dried here, meaning it's nice and cool, you can then trim the edge and you can sand it off if uh, you don't have any tools to be able to plane down the edge. Uh, sanding block will work. But my favorite tool is this and it's actually meant for edge banding. It's uh, spring loaded and it's got cutting heads in here. So all I need to do is put it over the edge, squeeze it and then pull. And it trims off the exact amount that you need. To cut the end, I use a sharp blade and run it underneath and I put a scrap on top just to give it some support. So now I've got all my edges ready. I'm going to sand these, prime these and paint these and I'm ready for the install. I've got all the parts painted and ready to assemble. So let's get to it. Our next video is how to upcycle these vintage water skis into a decorative shelf for a cottage. If you'd like to see when this comes out, click on the subscribe icon over here and click on the bell icon. That'll notify you as soon as this gets uploaded. I'll leave you some video suggestions below. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop.